Hello, I thought I'd do a video all about how masks might actually go wrong. Because the comment I see over and over and over again from people who obviously don't know all that much about masks is gas masks always fail because the valves fail. And that could be true in cases, but that's not the only reason the masks would fail. Because quite often I see people saying, don't buy a military surplus mask, they're crap. You need to spend $400 on a brand new mask, that's the only way you can protect yourself. They might not be American, but, um, you know, that's I always sort of imagine it in that sort of voice. Um, so, obviously, as I've gone over many times before, you do not need to waste all that money on a brand new mask. If you really wanted to, you could do, but I think you'd be better budgeting, buying a very good condition second-hand or surplus mask, and then using a lot of that other money to buy filters and other such things. Not wasting all the money on the mask, not having any filters, and then needing to buy more things. So... What, in my experience, is more likely to go wrong on the mask? So yes, the intake valve and the exhale valve could break, that is very possible. However, on the 80-odd masks in my collection, I don't think there's many where the valves don't work, to be honest. The valves are normally very simple, they're normally umbrella valves for the most part on, like, masks from the Cold War onwards. And that's where um, you've got a valve that goes, for example, like this one, it will only go one way. Like, this one was the exhale valve, so obviously it will move that way. And the idea is, obviously, because the valve only moves in one direction, the air obviously flows the way it's meant to flow. So, what's more likely to go wrong on a mask? Because, as long as the valve is held in properly and it's made of a decent rubber, it's not going to ripple that easily, especially if there's a cover protecting it. So, what is more likely to go wrong? Well, the most common problem I've had with my masks, and I know other people have, is the straps rip. Either the buckle somewhere will rip off or snap off, or the strap itself will rip, or something will go wrong with the straps. Um, and obviously that makes sense if you think about it, because the straps are the bit that will be tightened and loosened the most on the mask, they will have the most pressure put on them. When you've got a mask on your head and the straps are done up, the straps obviously are under tension. It's a bit like why mechanisms that have springs in, normally the spring is the first part to go. So if I put this mask on a moment... Let's just tidy that bit up so it's comfortable. Okay, so let's go up these straps. Now already on this mask, some of the straps do up better than others. And obviously that harness is now under tension because I've got it, you know, pulled tight. The buckles are going to have pressure on them and everything else. So, what we can obviously learn from this is that the parts of the mask under tension, like the straps, are most likely to go wrong, as saying the buckle might snap, a bit might come off here, the straps themselves might tear, you know, anything like that could happen. For example, on my Canadian C3, I had a really weird issue where the straps are held on the rubber, and the rubber is thicker than the uh, metal bit, so obviously the metal bit stays on because the rubber itself is you know, wider than the pit it's gone through. However, at one point when I was doing up the straps, the metal thing just came off of the rubber bit and I couldn't get it back through. So, that's weird, you know. But, like I said, from my personal experience, the most likely thing to go wrong on a mask is the straps, just because of all the things that can and will go wrong with them. Okay, what else? Lenses. I've definitely seen far more masks where the lenses are cracked and broken than the actual valves, and it makes sense if you drop a mask. Obviously, I'm not going to drop this one. So with older glass or sort of early plastic lenses you have the issue that they're not very impact resistant. So if you drop the mask, you know, the mask could land land on its lens and shatter the lens. Or something could hit the lens and break the mask that way. So obviously bear in mind that I'd say the lenses are far more likely to break than the valves. The valves are generally always covered up and you know unless you purposely try and rip one out the valve isn't going to, you know, come into contact with anything. That's not to say valves won't fail, because they can, but generally I've seen more masks with cracked and damaged lenses due to that than other things. The rubber on the mask itself can fail if the mask has been left out in sunlight for too long, not stored properly. Obviously UV radiation is fine when you've got the mask on for brief periods, but if it's left in day out, you know, day in, day out in the sunlight, then that could definitely damage the mask. Voice diaphragms are another one. Lots of voice diaphragms are even made from very thin film, which is one of the very, you know, big weak points of the mask. Or they're made from metal. I'm sure you know on my Finnish M61 V3, if you've seen the videos on it, I've had lots of problems where I have to keep gluing that voice diaphragm back in, 
because it wasn't very well you know done under the cover it came with so that's one of the things as well that often parts can come slightly loose of voice diaphragms and then they don't make an airtight seal or the voice diaphragm itself could rip because it's a bit like a drum skin it needs to be thin to vibrate and thin metal and thin plastic isn't the strongest stuff in the world especially when it's like cling film type stuff again you could probably repair it quite easily yourself but the issue is that you know if something's going to go wrong on the mask it's more likely to be the voice diaphragm and that's not technically a valve it's a you know like a drum skin Another thing as well, drinking tubes, lots of people, like I said, I'm not a massive fan of drinking tubes, some masks have better setups than others, it's very possible with some masks that you might get some sort of damage to the drinking uh, tube structure and then when you breathe through you'll be able to suck air through the drinking tube because it no longer makes some sort of airtight seal and things like that, again, that will compromise the mask and make it useless. So, hopefully, you've obviously seen of this that there's lots of things that can and will go wrong but like I said the valves are not the primary one because you know there's lots of other things that can go wrong in a mask also um, with some masks the peripheral seal this is the bit around there that makes it work properly if your head isn't an exact fit for the mask with peripheral seals if uh, they get old and damaged they won't make a good seal of your face anymore so as I said there's lots of things that can and will go wrong with a mask but generally the valves don't seem to go wrong all that often so when you have somebody telling you you can't buy a surplus mask because the valves are bound to fail after like five years after the mask is made or some crap like that uh, they don't know what they're talking about that's not to say that there aren't masks where the valves will fail but from my experience as I said I've got a lot of masks in my collection now the thing that fails most often is not the valves it's generally straps in my opinion and as I said because they're used the most on the mask then if not, it's cracked lenses or discoloured lenses, things like that. Voice diaphragms are a bit dodgy, you know. But the point I want to get across is, you know, there's lots more things that can go wrong on a gas mask simply than the valves. Uh, you know, so please uh, don't listen to people that say a mask is useless if it's surplus because the valves are rotted and not working. The valves are very simple as I've shown, <clears throat> it's literally an umbrella valve on each side of the uh, outtake and the intake. So, yeah, it's generally not the valves that go wrong first. That's not to say that there aren't some masks that probably have really shoddy crap valves where they will fail quickly. But on most masks the valves are done well. Some masks even have two sets of valves, um, you know, like a first and the second exhale valve and things like that. So they take even longer to break. So, there you go. What's more likely to fail on the mask? Not the valves, probably the straps in my opinion.